Hey guys, the title of this packet is Intro to Acids and Bases. We're starting chapter 16, it's all about acids and bases, and I realize we've talked a little about them in this class, but I know that my chemistry classes never got to really go through them. We didn't have time in the school year, and I'm betting you guys didn't either. There were, are a couple different definitions of what makes an acid and what makes a base. We started off forever ago with a thought from, I believe it was Antoine Lavoisier, that all acids contain oxygen. He was right that they're chemically similar and that a lot of acids do contain oxygen. But Svante Arrhenius came up with the idea that it's based on the presence of hydrogen. Hydrogen is really a unifying theme with acids and one we're going to look at throughout this chapter. Arrhenius said if you throw them in water, acids break down to give me H+, bases break down to give me OH-. The end. No other options. It's not a very complete definition, but it's on the right track. It's the right idea. So if you'll notice the way I have the acids and bases written from the Arrhenius definition here, I have water written above the reaction arrow, above yields, showing what's made almost like water is a catalyst. Water is what lets these compounds form their ions. That's iffy. You've got to have the requirement of this has to take place in aqueous solution. Eh. Not everything's an aqueous solution. And I, I personally don't like the fact that water is changed by this, and we're going to see that coming up, but not included. The Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases is the one we'll use in here. At the end of the chapter, you're going to see for one day the Lewis description of acids and bases, which is one of those things on my picky list that I don't like. It's there with ham and the activity series and things I just don't care for. So with the Bronsted-Lowry definition, we're still looking at the H+, the hydrogen cation, but we're looking at it as a proton. If you think about it, let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen's number one on the periodic table with a mass of one. So it has one proton, one electron, no neutrons, because the neutron would give it more mass. So it's in group one. It wants to lose an electron, right? If it loses an electron, it's H+. plus. All that remains is a proton. So that's big message one for today. H plus equals a proton because hydrogen didn't have anything to lose to begin with except an electron. And it booted out its electron, and it can be just called a proton now because that's all it is. Okay, that's your Bronsted-Lowry idea. An acid can give up a proton. It can donate H+. Plus. A base can accept that proton. We've gotten rid of the OH- minus thing. A base can accept that proton. Can OH- minus accept a proton? Yes. And that's where this definition is a bit more complete. What you're going to see is a couple different ways to look at H+. Plus. You can call it a proton, which it is. It'll also react with water to make something called the hydronium ion, H3O+. Plus. That's just H2O plus H gives me H3O plus when water accepts a proton. So that's all that is. You'll see that, and there's a note at the bottom there about the fact that that gets crazy. It can be more, it can be less things. They sort of cluster up like water does. So I never write it as anything except H3O plus, and you can also get away with writing it as just H plus, because it's basically the same idea in that, Water's fine. We tend to ignore water when it's involved, just because it's water. So rather than designating H2O as a solvent, we include it in your reaction, and that's at the top of your second page. Notice, check this out. The top reaction is water acting as the base. HCl is an acid, so if you look in the products, HCl has lost its hydrogen. It's donated a proton and is Cl minus. H2O has accepted that water, the, the extra hydrogen, and is H3O plus. Water in that case has acted like a base. You'll get that pairing in an acid-base reaction where something is acting as an acid, donating a proton, and something is acting as a base, accepting that proton. In my second answer, ammonia is a base. NH3 is a base, so it makes water act as an acid. NH3, NH4 plus has gained my proton, so it's the base. OH minus has donated the proton, so it's the acid. 
There's your definitions, and there's your list of what is the Bronsted-Lowry acid and what's the Bronsted-Lowry base in the HCl equation. Hopefully you can follow that pattern to look at other ones as well, because that's the practice today, I believe, is identifying Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. And if it's not today, it might not be today, it might be tomorrow that we're looking at that. You might get away practice-free today. Terms that are related to what water just did here are amphiprotic and amphoteric. They're similar. It's one of those picky things. It's almost like if I was to do something versus if I were to do something in English. It's very close. People know what you mean, but there is a little bit of a difference. Amphiprotic substances. Notice protic in there. A substance capable as acting of acting as both an acid and a base, specifically by donating and accepting protons. Water is the perfect example of this amphiprotic substance because here, H2O plus H gave me H3O plus. And here, H2O, when it donates a proton acting as an acid, gives me OH minus. Water can do either. It's amphiprotic because the proton can change either way. What determines which one it is, is it combined with an acid or a base in the reaction. And the similar term is amphoteric. Amphoteric also means able to act as an acid or a base, but doesn't include the transfer of a proton in that. And when we see Lewis acids and bases, you're going to see how something can be an acid without using anything with protons. So right now, is water amphiprotic? Yes. Is water amphoteric? Yes. But amphiprotic is more specific. And later we'll see things that are amphoteric, but not amphiprotic. So that's the take home for today. I think you're caught up on acids and bases, at least the basic stuff. Ha ha. Um, we'll look at pH coming up later because that's another important part of this. But for now, no, your Arrhenius definition doesn't really use water. But Bronsted-Lowry includes water, which is awesome because of the cool things water can do with accepting and donating protons. Moving on next time. Have a good day.